borrowed a cement mixer. Uh, picked it up yesterday, it was quite a ride. But that's going to be great for the concrete floors. Uh, the bottom floors are going to be concrete. And uh, some other things, I bought a bed for in the tent. Finally a real bed and some other bits for, for in the tent. So put that together. Yeah, it's a nice tent. What I need to do is uh, have the pegs on uh, or the line on similar heights. Because right now they're high there, which is good. But they're too low on the bottom. Especially on the other side because, uh, because it's going downhill. And then the, the pegs are too low, so you cannot get the right tension in the tent. But I can fix that. And I need to fix the stairs. So there's a few things to be done. I've been doing some tests with paint uh, in last week's uh, video. Um, for the deck it needs to be painted, but also for uh, parts of the cabins, so like for example a new door. Uh, so those are different things because the, the deck is a, a modern building and I'll probably go something of a lighter shade. Um, but for the cabin I'm, I'm looking into how to create something which is looks aged, right? So I've been looking into 
uh, a mix of vinegar and steel, which is a reaction with the wood, so you get this kind of grayish look, which turned out actually quite blue. And um, it's quite different how long you put the steel wool and the vinegar together. I think this was six hours and a lot more on that, so it turns out quite dark blue. Almost looks burnt, but way more blue than this one. And this is a bit more subtle. And also charring, you know, so this is lightly charred, just the surface, so you keep the grain sort of flat. Um, it's quite difficult to get it even because kind of the wood burns in places where it wants to. Um, and this is fully charred and then brushed up with, uh, with steel, with a steel brush. And this is interesting, you know, because if you keep this next to this, it's kind of the same. And these are chestnut beams, this is chestnut. These are 120 years old. It's a little lizard there. And um, yeah, it's the same kind of feel and color. So I, I could imagine if you build a door with a traditional design uh, for the cabins and you do it like this, uh, it would look quite convincing. This is not good for the deck because it's way too dark and it would get hot from the sun and also it still gives off some black so you, it needs another finish and it could be linseed oil. Um, yeah, so these are, so this is charred, vinegar and steel. These are various wood stains that you just bought from the store and this is linseed oil which is quite popular because it's, it makes the wood very durable. Uh, you have raw and boiled. Turns out the color is quite similar on here, but I did only one thin layer, so... Uh, it's, it's more common to use boiled because it dries in a day or two, and raw doesn't really dry. It, it kind of stays sticky, although this is dried up, so... Again, it's only one layer, so... I could imagine if you do a few layers it kind of stays sticky or it takes just a long time to dry. Um, you know, aged wood. I've been looking into it and I, I did this little road trip through Switzerland about a month ago, just looking at the barns. There's so many beautiful old barns there. All wood and they've been weathered in the sun so they've got these grey and dark brown shades. And um, the conclusion basically is that you can't create age, right? It, in order to it to be convincing and real, it just has to go through its time. You can't really fake it. Um, if you look at this door, for example, here, this is about 50 to 100 years old, and there's there's so much going on, right? You got the gray color, you got the different shades, you have the the nails that are rusted, the corners are rounded off, like the bottom is eroding away and rotting away. There's just so many beautiful things going on and you see it's real. You know, it's almost like a, uh, like a face of an old man or woman. You can just see the amount of time and the summers and winters and good times and bad times. And looking at it, it makes you feel something. It makes you kind of like, reflect back to other times and wonder about life. <laughs> uh, and buildings do that. You know, it's the same as you walk through a historic village in Europe. It, it transports you to another world. So if you're gonna fake that, it doesn't work. It doesn't evoke that feeling, you know.
So all the boards need a lot of preparation. First they need to be cut to size in width through the saw bench. Then they need to be shaved off because it's rough lumber. So I'll use this, it's an electric shaver. Sometimes I use this, but it would take a few more weeks if I would do everything with this, like all the boards on the deck. Then uh, some shaving on this side to get it like perfectly straight. Then you'll have cuts from the shaver, so I need to flatten it with this uh, heavy uh, sander. Um, I haven't done the deck yet because I didn't have the sander. And, uh, but these are vertical, so they're a bit more difficult because they're for the stairs. The risers, I think they're called. So I do them now. And then, um, oh, the final, the corners need to be shaved off. And then cut to length with the miter saw. So it's a lot of work. But it's nice work. I like this.
I got the cord stuck. It jammed in here. It's nothing got broken, no uh, short circuits. I mean, the cable is still good. I'm gonna have to try it. Fixed. I think there's a sensor in there when there's too much friction, for example, when this comes in or something else comes in between the, the cylinders, it blocks, it turns it off. So there was no short circuit, I was afraid of that. And I had to cut it off. It's quite a long cord, so I'm, I just lost about this, which is fine. I have to be more careful because when it gets under here, it gets stuck and it could get worse. All right. The garden's getting quite full. These potatoes are taking over. They're getting very big uh, and kind of overshadowing the cauliflower and broccoli. Next time, put a little bit less in there. But maybe it works, we'll see. Strawberries are coming through. Looking forward to those fresh strawberries. I'm gonna have to build some more protection for, for the birds.
Summer is treating me well right now. It's so incredibly beautiful and nice to work too because it can be quite humid and hot to work up there. But today is very crisp and clear. So there's a bit of a breeze coming through. Salad from the garden, it's so juicy and like fragrant. It's it's the best thing. Um, I wasn't saying this a few days ago though, because I was moving out of the cabin. I was a bit in, of a, in a rush to, to set up the tent and move in there because I was getting a lot of bites from, I don't know what, fleas, um, mites, lice, there, is, there are so many insects in these walls, um, spiders, many lizards, the lizards are fun though, those are, those are cute. But I mean, I don't know what has bitten me, but there's just several things that give me the itch during the night. I wake up and uh, it wasn't so bad this winter, but uh, in summer it's getting bad. Like, as, uh, as overwhelmingly beautiful it is here in summer, it's the insect life is, it's, it's a lot, you know. So many flies and spiders, you know, because there's such... Uh, the, the grass is high and everything so and uh, I don't know maybe also in the wood termites that's I mean the old beams everything is exposed things can get into the inner cabin so it's getting bad um, there's an entire ecosystem in these walls um, so I was glad to move out because the, the tent is clean and there's so it's 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 closed off very well this isn't, I mean it's insulated, but there's like small holes so spiders and insects can come through. Um, and there was a dormice, which is a <coughs> something in between a rat and a squirrel looking. And it's very cheeky, it comes in and it's ravishing, it's, it's easy to climb into anything and it, it bites through packaging and stuff so it's been eating a lot of my food so that's why I have to put it in plastic boxes like that and it's not shy you know it was looking at me I posted it on Instagram it was looking at me like haha I'm gonna be here for a few months because they sleep most of the year they're called a seven sleeper in a few languages in Dutch and in German uh, because they sleep for seven months during winter and now they are, they are here and they're keeping me also awake at night because they are ravishing around. Uh, in Dutch they're called Relmuis, which translates to riot mouse. It is really like that, it's, uh, they look cute but they are a pain. Um, and they are very hard to get rid of. So, and people have warned me before here that they tend to find a a warm place for for winter to hibernate and that could potentially be my new roof the insulated roof so what I have to do on top of the insulation is put some chicken wire or something so it can't eat through it's not like a small mouse that can go in between anything this is quite big so if it's chicken wire it's probably good so some challenges uh, here in summer but um, we'll get through the tent is nice to live in. Nice. 